Hello digital charcuterie fans, Steve here aka the casual pop fan, but I have to tell you, my love for the Legend of Zelda series is nothing casual. Ever since I played A Link to the Past on my Super Nintendo, I have been hooked on this series and I cannot wait for Tears of the Kingdom to finally come out in just a short time. James asked me what were some of the things I was looking forward to most and here's what I've narrowed it down to. First up, exploration. It's a new but same Hyrule map from Breath of the Wild. I'm really excited to see what's changed in Hyrule over the span of a few years. What happened to those divine beasts? I don't see any signs of them in the trailers. After I beat Breath of the Wild and completed most side quests, I would sometimes just load the game and take a stroll through Hyrule, looking at the map for places I haven't been yet and really just go for a walk and explore. Now I get to do it all over again and see what changes I can pick up on and notice. And the addition of floating islands all over the map adds a whole new dimension of things to explore. It's the map from Breath of the Wild on steroids. I can't wait to find the changes. Next up is new abilities. Ever since Nintendo released a quick gameplay video from Legend of Zelda producer Ahi Aonuma, we have learned about Link's new abilities. Recall, Fuse, Ascend, Ultra Hand. I'm really curious how these new abilities will alter and affect the gameplay. While Recall and Fuse will affect battle, I'm really curious how Ascend will change the exploration of Hyrule. Ascend's ability to replace long climbs and escape perilous situations almost seems too good to be true. Like a witchcraft cheat somehow. And I am here for it. The other ability I am intrigued with is Ultra Hand. Actually, not me, but my eight-year-old son who's not really a fan of the traditional Zelda gameplay like I am, he's excited. The moment he saw the ability in the gameplay footage, his eyes lit up. It's now not just about combat or exploration, you've added engineering and building mechanics into the mix, and that is awesome. It's not quite as extensive as Minecraft, but adding an engineering aspect to the game changes things. He said he doesn't want to beat the game, he just wants to build in it. That's what he's here for. Here's hoping we haven't lost some of Link's other abilities like Magnesis and Remote Bombing because, let's be honest, they were pretty useful too. Next up, dungeons. Could it be? Do we have dungeons and castles to explore now? Dungeons were a controversial omission from Breath of the Wild, and that struck a nerve of some players. Personally, I missed them, but I wasn't offended that they were left out because we had so much other stuff to explore. It's not confirmed yet, but the latest trailer shows some peculiar locations that don't quite match up with everything else and popular opinion suggests we see their return. They have to replace all those shrines with something, right? Also, did anybody else notice in the last trailer that Link was standing in what appears to be a restored Hyrule castle? It looked regal and awesome. Much, much different from the dilapidated Hyrule castle we got in Breath of the Wild. I'm really looking forward to the flying and gliding. Who's ready to take to the skies once more? In somewhat of a callback to Skyward Sword, Link returns to the skies to explore the mysterious floating islands in the sky. How did they get there? Who cares? I'm not questioning it. How cool was it to see Hyrule Castle get ripped from the ground to ascend to the sky above? Link can't rely on his trusty Loftwing to bail him out this time around, but he's got a paraglider, and I'm sure he might have some newfound abilities to help out with that. We are going to get majestic views of Hyrule from high above. Remember, when exploring the floating islands, it's not the fall that hurts, just the sudden stop. Make sure you're diving into rivers and lakes there, folks. And the thing I'm looking forward to the most is the return of Ganon. It has been years since we had a proper reintroduction of Ganondorf, the King of Thieves in human form. In Breath of the Wild, we had Calamity Ganon, the evil spirit of the Gerudo Warlock, but it wasn't the same. It was more like a flying ghost spirit of primal evil. In Skyward Sword, we had Demise, who is Ganon adjacent, but not him. And this is the first time he's been played in a game by a voice actor. Voice actor Matthew Mercer has his work cut out for him by playing such a villain of pure evil. That sounds like a fun role to take on, and I can't wait to see and hear what Ganon has to say. So that's it. There's going to be so much to do in this game, and I probably haven't even hit the tip of the Legend of Zelda iceberg. But that's what this casual pop fan but major Legend of Zelda player is looking forward to most from Tears of the Kingdom.